today on Beyond Six Seconds. If you're not targeting the right people, you're wasting so much of your time and energy and resources that we as small business owners do not have the luxury of wasting. Welcome to Beyond Six Seconds, the podcast that goes beyond the six second first impression to share the extraordinary stories and achievements of everyday people. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Adrian Garland. Adrian is the inspirational and passionate founder and CEO of She Leads Media, a boutique marketing consultancy and conference production company serving women-led businesses. Over the course of her career, Adrian has led direct and digital marketing, product development, and strategy for large media companies such as Cablevision, DirecTV for Business, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and PR Newswire. She now focuses all of her time on creating marketing strategies and visibility programs for women-led businesses, in addition to producing the She Leads annual conference and other events for women leaders and entrepreneurs. Adrian holds her MBA in marketing with a concentration in entertainment, media, and technology from the Stern School of Business at New York University. She is the executive chair of NYU Stern Women in Business, a recent graduate of the Goldman Sachs Tory Burch 10,000 Small Businesses Program, and the 2018 winner of the Global Win Trade Award for Independent Women's Business Network. She's also a New York Business Journal 2016 Women of Influence honoree and an Ostia Investments advisor. Adrian, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Thanks for being with us today. So I'd love to learn more about your business, She Leads Media. How did you get the inspiration to start that? So She Leads Media really came out of my desire to uh, start a business myself. So I had been in the corporate world ever since I graduated with my MBA, and I really loved it. I felt like I had a great career, but I always had uh, this desire to be an entrepreneur. I, I feel like I have a very strong entrepreneurial spirit and always was looking for new and innovative ways to do things and to be more efficient and effective. And I had always wanted to have my own business. I just never really had that you know, product idea or that uh, service idea. So in 2010, I had achieved a pretty great position at PricewaterhouseCoopers, but felt that I needed to venture out on my own. And it was sort of a now or never kind of a thing for me. Mm -hmm. So when I went to start my own business, I did what many women do and they turn to what they know best. So what I knew best was marketing. So I thought, well, it's easy enough to start a marketing consulting business. And this way I can work with so many different businesses and learn about them and help them to grow in the same way that I helped all of these other companies that I had been working for to grow. But what I soon realized is that it is not easy to start a business. It is not the same thing as working in a marketing department at a company. And it's not the same thing as working even at an agency. So in 2013, I had been talking to a dear friend of mine who is an event guru, basically. And she said, well, why don't we do a conference where we bring together women who have started businesses and that are super successful with other women like us who are trying to figure it out? So that's what we did. And we sort of did it as a, um, an experiment, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we had 150 people show up, which was really cool. They said that the way that we put together this conference was very practical, actionable, genuine, um, and they had never been any, to anything like it. So we were inspired to continue to do the conference the second year. And um, I've actually been doing the same conference just with uh, different content and different speakers and things like that every year since 2013. And I have since rebranded the company to She Leads Media to really incorporate my marketing consulting practice along with my conference and events. Oh, so how does your marketing consulting fit in with the conference and events? So I had started out working for larger companies and doing projects or working on a temporary basis. And the company, my consultancy was, was just me. And 
I worked for a lot of large companies and I realized that that really wasn't in alignment with what She Leads Media is doing for other people. So I've shifted my focus a bit and I exclusively work with women-led businesses right now who are looking to gain visibility for their business through media attention and, and publicity and also for women that They've been wearing multiple hats as they're growing their business and that they realize that now is the time to bring somebody on who's an expert in marketing and lead generation so that they can be freed up to do what they do best and to help them to grow their business. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, just speaking with different entrepreneurs, we definitely hear that it's hard, especially solopreneurs, if it's really just you trying to do everything. So I could see how that service could really be an enormous help to people who are just starting out with their own businesses. Yeah. And I, you know, I suffer from the same thing. I, I tend to do many of the, the tasks, even though I don't like, or I'm not good at many of them. Um, and I've realized that it's better for my business to delegate away those things that I'm not good at, or that I need help with. Um, I've recently brought on a marketing director and also a virtual assistant. And I feel like it's made all of the difference. You know, even though I don't have a huge team of people, just having a couple of people to talk to and bounce ideas off of and just get to what I need to delegate is super helpful. So I feel like I'm really in the shoes of the women that I'm serving and the role that I can play for them is to get them to understand that outsourcing, marketing, marketing strategy, and really thinking about lead generation and who your target is, is something that I am expert in and that a lot of women are not, even though they think they are or that they might want to be. These women that have other businesses that are not directly in the field of marketing really need to focus on improving their product, building relationships, creating operational efficiencies. So where I can jump in and help them to gain the visibility that they need and put together a solid marketing and lead generation plan, you know, that is really where I excel. That's fantastic. And I know you worked in a variety of different areas throughout your career in digital and product and marketing. How do you bring all of your experiences from your career with those larger companies into your new consultancy? That is a really great question. One of the things that I struggle with in my own business to be you know, very transparent is I was, I guess you could call classically trained in marketing. Mm -hmm. And it works very well in a corporate environment. From a small business perspective, I have to do a lot of educating to the small business owner about what marketing is all about and the bigger picture and the the importance of really honing in on and understanding who the target audience is. Mm -hmm. So many times, small business owners, you know, they're so busy that they don't take the time to, to take a step back and get super clear. And what I have to do is sort of slow these women down and get them to a place where they can be really crystal clear on who it is that they're trying to reach. Because in that process, even though that may take some time, that is going to allow the marketing to be as efficient and effective as possible. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not targeting the right people, you're wasting so much of your time and energy and resources that we as small business owners do not have the luxury of wasting. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great distinction. I see that you focus your business primarily on helping women business owners. And I'm curious, what was behind your decision to focus on women who were starting businesses? Do they have particular challenges that are different from men who are starting businesses? Yes. The reason that I started the conference and that now I'm really focused on helping women is that I feel that women are starting from, you know, behind the starting line, if you will. Mm -hmm. There have been so many um, networks and just, you know, boys clubs, if you will, in the corporate world for years and years, things that are, you know, ingrained at this point. And women have had to first, you know, go into that world and, and try to navigate within it. And now, as they're starting their own businesses, 
they're looking at that corporate model and saying, is that even a model that I should be following? Because it's very male oriented. It is male derived and, you know, it's set up for men and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, you know, I want to be crystal clear that I am not anti man. I'm not Mm -hmm. anti corporate. I'm just for equality. And I don't think that women have had access to the same type of tools, resources, networks that men have had access to. And so through the She Leads conference, through some of the content that I produce and the consulting that I do, what I'm trying to do is to get women to that place where the playing field is more equal and that they do have the the resources and the advice and you know the networking and the access to things like capital and just really terrific people that can help them to get to the place that they need to be in order to be successful. That's fantastic. The the thing that comes to mind are sort of the boys clubs and, you know, people making decisions on the, the golf course and that sort of stereotype. But what other tools or, or models are there that tend to be more male oriented that you're looking to build, you know, a more inclusive model of? Financing and access to capital mm-hmm. is a huge issue. More and more, there are women that are starting funds and that are funding women businesses. There's a particular focus on women in tech, which I think is absolutely terrific. And again, we need more of it. But women also start many other types of businesses. And so they are not able to scale as quickly as maybe some of their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. There is definite bias, you know, whether it's implicit or explicit, there is definite bias against funding women, which if you look at the research just does not bear out to be valid because when women start businesses, they are definitely more conservative. They're more risk averse and they end up doing better, growing more steadily and for the long term than some of these, you know, hot unicorn style businesses. I guess there's this view out there that if you fund a male owned business, you're going to get a return on your money quicker. Mm. And that is not the case. (laughs) You know, you can look at so much research that just shows that the people who invest in women owned businesses actually end up getting a return on their money more quickly and, you know, to a greater extent than investing in, in men. But women get you know, I don't know the exact statistic, but they get a very, very small percentage of the overall venture capital financing that's out there. Mm -hmm. And that is something that absolutely needs to change. And I think that that's probably the biggest hindrance for women and the thing that holds them back from scaling up. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That access to venture capital and external funding is really crucial, especially in the early days of a business to really get those off the ground. And yeah, I can totally see that women traditionally have had a lot less access to that and and continue to struggle with that. So that's fantastic that you're really focused not just on the marketing and the revenue generation from sales perspective, but also um, the funding from a capital perspective as well. Yeah. And even just, you know, the knowledge too, like you were saying, there's so much knowledge that's baked into these boys networks or just casual conversations that men have, you know, it's sort of all business all the time. Mm -hmm. And women look to make connections first, I believe, which in itself is an amazing business building tool. But we, I find are much less transactional than men. So if two men are having a casual conversation, conversation and one mentions that they're, you know, starting a business or that they're looking for something in their business, another man will offer up right there on the spot, you know, who that man can talk to, who they should get in touch with, who they can network with. Whereas women don't offer that up as quickly because I think that we're trying to build a relationship and make sure that we can trust the other person and that we can open our network up to that other person. But that is something that holds us back, I believe. I don't think that women need to be more transactional. It's just a different type of an approach. Absolutely. And requiring different types of tools to support as well. 
Yeah. So you help women business owners with all different kinds of challenges from marketing and revenue generation and capital and networking and more. Tell me a little bit about the biggest challenge you've faced so far in either launching or running your own business and how do you address or overcome that? So the biggest challenge that I have had is shifting my mindset from being a corporate marketing professional to being a founder and a CEO of my own company. I think that the skills that are required to be a founder and a leader of your own company are very different than the skills that are required to be successful in a corporate arena. Mm -hmm. And I've really struggled with how do I package up and position and sell my expertise, if you will. I have a lot of trouble articulating what my value is. Um, When I work with people, they see it, but as a marketer, it's super frustrating because it's the thing that I'm out there helping other people to do. And I really struggle with sort of turning the focus onto me and taking my own advice. And it's something that I've struggled with, I think, ever since the beginning. I do a lot of research. I talk to a lot of people. I am coming up with different packages, different levels, different very distinct offerings because I had in the past been super customized working with the clients, whatever they needed, I would do. I'm sort of a Jane of all trades. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience across marketing, business development, sales, operations. I started my career in finance. So I'm super comfortable doing budgeting, creating um, subscription models, really doing so much. But that does not translate well into the small business arena where many of what smaller companies are looking for is expertise in one particular area. As a marketer, I preach focusing on your target and not being distracted by all of the other stuff that's out there. But I have a lot of trouble taking my own advice. So that has been the biggest struggle for me. Yeah. It's funny. It's like uh, they say trying to write your own resume. Sometimes it's easier to write about other people and recognize their value just having an external perspective. But when it's time to do it for yourself, somehow it's much more difficult. I mean, I've certainly found that myself as well. (laughs) Absolutely. Wow. So, you know, working with your clients, what kind of feedback have you gotten from them? I think there's a theme that happens with my clients that is very heartwarming and yet also maybe frustrating, if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I am very passionate about helping women to grow their businesses. And what I like to do is really dive into their business. So I have a full picture understanding of everything about their business. I think that's a little bit of my MBA, Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming through me wanting to really understand the business model, how the companies are making money, how they're marketing, what they're doing to be efficient. I want to know everything. So I get so intimately involved with my clients' businesses that after working with them a little while, they ask me to come on, uh, you know, in a full-time capacity, whether it's, you know, a chief of staff position or whether it's to run the marketing department. But many of these clients that I serve don't have the type of you know resources and budgets to bring me on at the level that I would even consider. Right. So I see that as a huge success. You know, they, they're very comfortable with me. They want to bring me into their world. And I love that. Yet I want to serve so many other women. And I also want to be growing my own business. So it's it's sort of been this uh, you know, catch. 22 wow. um, position that I end up putting myself in unknowingly sometimes. Um, and I think that's another lesson that I need to learn if I am to have, you know, a portfolio of clients. It's, you know, drawing those boundaries and being very clear on the particular services that I offer so that it doesn't go into this whole scope creep thing where somebody feels so comfortable with me that they want to bring me on staff. 
So that has been a huge success on my marketing consulting side. Mm -hmm. And then on the conference side, I feel very successful knowing that I have been producing this conference since 2013. And every single year, you know, 250 women show up. Wow. And that I am constantly getting pitched by incredible speakers who are looking to speak at the She Leads conference and that I'm being recognized in places like Canada. I was asked to be on a radio program for the Canadian Broadcasting Company. Yeah. And I won that International Wind Trade Award because I have relationships with women in London and in the Netherlands. I really look at that as a humongous success. And it's not over, you know, it's sort of just the beginning, but it's been six years in the making and I'm nowhere close to where I even want to be. I feel like it's, I feel like I'm just starting. Wow. I feel like when you've tapped into an incredible opportunity and find something that has a lot of energy and excitement around it, that it'll just start growing and building, not completely on its own, but you'll kind of see all the energy flowing into you. And I feel like that's what's happening with the She Leads Conference is that you have a vision, you create this amazing conference, and then it just attracts all this positive energy and interest and excitement. And it's incredible to watch it happen. So I'm so happy that that's happening for you now. Thank you. Yeah. And the, you know, the rub, as they like to say, mm -hmm. is that the conference in itself is not necessarily a business. It's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. It's bringing people together. It's an incredible platform. But my challenge is to really figure out how to turn that energy and that brand building and that positivity into something that is profitable. Because right now, it's more of an opportunity to just bring people together and to create all this goodwill, but it is not a money-making proposition yeah. that my, my marketing consulting work is really the thing that is, uh, you know, the revenue driver of my business. I would like to completely shift that model and build out the conference, do it in multiple cities, take it on the road and create content out of the conference that extends doing things like you're doing with a podcast, mm. you know, creating a more ongoing, visible content machine really on the website and creating courses and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the direction that she leads needs to go in the future if it's going to be a profitable venture and a scalable venture for, um, for me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think the creation of content and just offering it in different ways to consume it. So from courses to blogs or podcasts and things that you can sell it, you know, that makes a lot of sense to expand your business and your brand from there. Yeah. So what are your goals for She Leads Media? What else would you like to be getting involved in? World domination. <laughs> <laughs> she leads, takes over the world. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I, I would like to see the She Leads brand grow on a national scale and also on an international basis so that women know that She Leads is a place that they can come to if they're looking to uh, start businesses, grow businesses, scale businesses, and, and really step up as leaders. I would like to be that preeminent brand that women can trust. There are so many amazing member organizations and conferences and just, you know, local programs and everything, but they're so disparate. It's, you know, it's, it's like all these little hives of bees and there's no overarching brand or entity that brings them all together. Eventually, I would like She Leads to be that umbrella that brings it all together so that women don't have to do a lot of digging and experimenting in order to get what it is that they need. I would like to have a greater media presence. The name of the company is She Leads Media. And I would like to be a media company. Mm -hmm. That is my background. That is what I'm passionate about. And if I can create the most actionable, relevant, practical content for women who are looking to be leaders and to be business leaders, personal leaders, professional leaders, I have a vision for She Leads that that is 
you know, where I would like to go. That's fantastic. Really exciting. If people want to learn more about She Leads Media, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Well, they can visit my website, which is sheleadsmedia.com. You know, there's information there about the upcoming conference, which is happening in New York City on October 26th. Mm -hmm. And then they can read about the different services that I offer all on my website. And they can contact me through the forums that are on the website. Or if somebody wants to reach out to me via email, I'm always very open to that. I read every single email that I get. I respond very quickly to anybody that reaches out to me. My email address is adrian at sheleadsmedia.com. Com. And I'm super interested in understanding what some of the challenges are for women that are launching and growing businesses. I'd love to hear from your audience on, you know, what are some of those things? Because I'd like to produce content and give them the resources that they need in order to overcome those challenges. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of guests on the podcast who are women entrepreneurs and a lot of listeners who are entrepreneurs as well. So that's a great offer. Thank you so much. Of course. So as we close out the podcast today, is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know or anything that they can help or support you with? I think the main thing would just be to come to the conference. You know, it really is a unique experience. I always offer wonderful, actionable content. My speakers are not the type of speakers that saunter onto the stage and, you know, the audience just claps for them and then they disappear. Mm -hmm. Speakers are all committed to working with the audience on a one-on-one basis. They are very open. They want to see women succeed just like I do. So there's a very different feel about the conference. It's super intimate. It's very genuine. There's a lot of love in the room. I know that that sounds a little you know, strange maybe in a, in a business or professional sense, but I feel like if we can operate from that place of giving and being genuine and showing love you know, for our fellow sisters, Mm -hmm. um, then we can all do better and we can all rise together. And I really would like to see a new type of company emerge, one that is, you know, more balanced and brings that femininity into the business realm, because I think we really need that as a country and as the world, we we need to be a little bit more caring so that we can live in a better, more fair and balanced world. So, you know, what can you do to support She Leads? You can come out to the conference. You can reach out to me. You can hire me to help you with your marketing, with your business development, and with your visibility. Perfect. So many wonderful opportunities that you're offering to uh, women business owners. Well, thank you, Adrian, so much for being a guest on my podcast. I, I loved learning about your business and hearing what inspired you and hearing your stories and wish you all the best of luck with She Leads Media. Thank you so much, Carolyn. This was absolutely wonderful, and I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks for listening to Beyond Six Seconds. Please help us spread the word about this podcast. Share it with a friend, give us a shout out on your social media, or write a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. You can find all of our episodes on our website, www.beyond6seconds.com. Until next time.